Hello and welcome to another episode of A Bright Side. Today we're in Wookie Hole, Somerset. So let's go check it out. Sign there that states Wookie Hole Caves and Legends and Adventure. A magical and historical experience for explorers of all ages. Nice little stream here running through the village. We've just driven through the village of Wookie Hole. Very, very picturesque. Some beautiful old buildings. What's this say? Something hills. A little bit hard to read. I assume Mendip Hills, I assume. Area of outstanding natural beauty. The kids are really excited about today. AJ keeps calling it Wookie Holes, and then Matilda keeps saying, No, AJ, it's Wookie Hole. <laughs> I like that turret shaped building there. Looks like a wizard's hat. Okay. Are you both excited? Yeah! Yeah? <laughs> Mama Bear, you excited? Good driving, by the way. The sat nav took us down every country lane imaginable. Our sat nav is mental, isn't it? It seems to just... It likes to challenge me. Any, you know, it's... it's you... Any route option, I yeah. will go, going to take you down the most difficult. <laughs> it's 9.20 in the morning. Wookie Hole itself opens at 9.30, and we've booked to go in at 10. We, we, we're going to hope, we're going to go in there sort of before 10. Hopefully they'll let us in a little bit early. Um, depends how strict they are on their times, but what I thought I would do is just walk up in this direction because Goodness Because I've just spotted This beautiful looking church along with That like public house real ales good food just gonna have a little closer look It was like a nice village church. They're, uh, they're like the centerpiece, aren't they, of a, of a village or town. I'm not going to venture inside particularly, but uh, this is just an open doorway here. Like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in. But uh, yeah, nice. States here, rest and be thankful. All right. Real ales, good food. Bar, or restaurant, bar, hotel. I always love that like crisscross pattern. It was like very Elizabethan. Reminds me of um, the city of Van in Brittany over in France, where the old quarter, a lot of it is um, all like with that crisscross wood pattern. And this pub is just called the Wookie Hole Inn. All right, nice. So we've pre-booked, I mentioned a minute ago that we're doing at 10 o'clock, although we're going to try and get in a bit earlier. So what did this cost us? So it, um, for two adults and two children and a guidebook, it was £80.70. So it was 1765 per adult. Yep. Um, so it was a cheaper experience than no, Cheddar Gorge. £17.65 per child, Right. 21 45 per hour. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so about a similar price. Similar sort of price range. Okay, so about 80 quid for the four of us. Yeah. And, and that was AJ, you said we had no, to pay? No, we had to pay for AJ. We had to pay for AJ, so he wasn't eligible for freeness. Yes. Okay, right. Shelley and Matilda are just um, taking care of business in the bathrooms, and I had to laugh because the symbols here are very, you know, for the, for the bathrooms, they've got little, little witches' hats or little wizard hats on. I like that. With a little broom in the middle. We have got our little stickers to say we can go in, and our guidebook, which is awesome. We'll have a little uh, look at that in a minute. And um, yes, there is a witch here. Okay, so we're going to cross the road. 
nothing coming, which is good because I don't want to get killed in Wookie Hole. So if it looks like there's a gift shop up there, we'll do that afterwards. So I assume we just head in this general direction toward the cave. Beware. Be aware. Not be beware. Be aware. <laughs> I'll be aware, okay. <laughs> this like little mini golf course down there has caught my eye. And I think our ticket is good for that, I believe. I think we could play that if we wanted to. Is that right? Yeah? Okay, nice. Just the side of the cliff. I'm pointing out the obvious, but uh, it's a Wookiee hole. Gonna be in there somewhere. Look right, at this dude. Alright, heading in. Kids have just been um, given a glow stick, or not given one, we bought a, how much was the glow stick for? Uh, £2 each. £2 pounds each, so that's nice, you've got a little glow stick going around. So we are permitted to film and take photographs, but they just ask that you don't use any flash. But that's fine, because I haven't got the flash set up on the, on the camera, so uh, that's nice. Um, you do, apparently it does get quite low in parts, like down to about like three or four feet, so there's definitely a lot of crouching as we go. Here we go. So the man at the front did say that it was obviously a cave, and it's uneven, and its constant temperature is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 10 or 11 degrees Celsius if you prefer. About 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so we have got our hoodies with us if we get chilly, but currently I'm just in my t-shirt. Got your glow stick? And you got your glow stick? But you two both stand over there, right? Nice. The goat herder. The dark abode of the witch of Wookie Hall. Who tethered her goats in this cave. Goats in the cave? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Right, kiddos, just be careful because there's some steep steps, okay? So hold on to that rail. That's it. And the eight, that's right, yeah. And the rain's Concentrate on the steps. Oh, I think a witch has been here. See her potions? She's got like a little cauldron there. Ooh. A witch. A I've got a witch Standing at the top of these stairs. Nice little overview here of this sort of opening section of Wookie Hall. There's like a stairs up there, but that's been uh, roped off. So they got Monk to come and exercise the witch out of the cave. I'm doing so turned her to stay. So it is this black silhouetted rock sticking up. If you look at the right hand side of it, so it's like facing the river. The black silhouetted rock there is said to look like a witch head. So that is the legend of the witch fantasy. So that's where Look at this expanse of water. Amazing. This is allegedly the dog belonging to the witch. Turned to stone, just as she was, by some sort of exercising monk. Not an exercising monk, but you know, not one doing aerobics, but you know what I mean. Look at that. There is a boat down there, so there's like ropes, so you would pull the boat in and like for like, um, like cave explorers proper, with, you know, like you know, like with all the gear. There's like a, a black hole, as they term it, that you can do some exploring in. Nice. Oh, right, it gets a bit low here. That's for sure. Oh, my head. Okay, I'm just of average height. Um, what am I? About five foot nine, something like that. I wouldn't want to be, you know, like six foot four, trying to get in under here. But, uh, wow, look at this. I'm going to point the camera down and do a big reveal, because here we go. This is called the Great Hall, is it? It's 22 metres high. 22 metres high. Wow. Beautiful. Another pool of water here. Obviously, all the rainwater over the years, centuries, whatever. 
hits the ground, filters down through the rock, and you end up with this beautiful, clear water. And I bet that's deeper than it looks. But it's way deeper than it looks. Wow, 22 meters up, what's that, about 70 feet? Just like he was in the caves at Cheddar, AJ is a little bit anxious, so if you choose to come to Walkie Hole or the caves at Cheddar, just be aware that maybe for some small children, if they have a, a disposition where they get a bit nervous and anxious, uh, just be aware that that could be the case. Like I said, AJ's fine, he's, he's got hold of Mama's hand, but uh, he's just a little bit anxious. Also in like the main sections of the cave there are uh, like guides that will happily give you some information. Wow, look at this. Brilliant. Okay, he states fear of a witch's parlour. That's what this area is called. Look at my shadow. Hey! Again, of one of those beautiful, clear water ponds down here. And apparently back in 1935, this was the site of the world's very first cave dive. So that placard says. Ooh. Spooky lanterns light in the way. This cave. This cave looks a little bit more man-made, I don't know. There's no information that has stated that, but it looks a bit more man-made. Oh! Cave aged cheese. The award-winning Wookiee Hole cheese is stored for up to a year to gain its characteristic and mouth-watering flavour. Look at all that cheese. We can't get in there because it's like chained off. But look at that. Shelly, is that like heaven for you in there? Yeah, so obviously we haven't tried Wookie Hole aged cheese yet, but we did try some Cheddar Gorge mm. cave cheese. And that was really nice. Maybe we'll try and find so some we'll of this. make sure that's linked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yesterday's video, yeah, we'll link in the description if you want to see that. But that looks amazing, yeah, look at that. I think we'll have to try and find some of this cheese and procure it. Good to know. Right, a walkway bridge here has been established. I know, yeah, I'm going to come through in a minute. Is it alright? Is it scary? Okay, apparently it's a five and a half metre drop. So that's about 20 feet. Oh yeah. Wow, look at this. See like these metal rods that have been drilled in to the rock, presumably for like previous expeditions maybe. Wow, this place is awesome. Hopefully there's no like zombies and creepers and stuff down here if you're familiar with the world of Minecraft. That would be very uncomfortable if a creeper just came up and exploded. There is something so fascinating about caves. I do love caves. I remember many years ago in New Mexico, uh, 
out in the United States. Went to Carlsbad Caverns. And now I've got to go really low here. Oh. Went to Carlsbad Caverns. And they were phenomenal. Oh wow, look at all this. Hear that waterfall there, right in the centre of frame. Hello up there. Hi. Hey, you all right? Shelbar there taking a picture of the kids. <laughs> There's proof they were here at Wookie Hole. Oops, someone's dropped their uh, little maps. So this here is called the Taylor Tunnel, excavated only in 2015 by Nigel Taylor, Matt Durbin and his team. A thousand tons of rock were blasted to make this new passage to Chamber 20. A thousand tons of rock were removed. All these spooky lanterns. I like that. So we've just come through that man-made tunnel only excavated about eight years ago. And this is now what's called Chamber 20. Again, another one of those lakes down there. That's very kind. <laughs> He's a filmer, who? He's a probably four. a filmer. He's probably you're four. <laughs> He's probably filming me, and I don't really mind because I've got I've got my disguise on. We were just chatting to the lady over there. I think this is the farthest point that we can go. Uh, we kind of start making our way back now, but um, she was just saying that they don't really know the full extent of these caves. There's so much of it that's underwater, um, and you know, and you do have to be a real sort of Caving, cave diving expert to do that sort of exploration. Wouldn't be for me, wouldn't be for you either. No, not no. me. <laughs> no. Mm. Not my first choice of activity. No. <laughs> Cathedral chamber. The highest in the show cave, 40 meters. Do they mean through there or this bit? I assume this bit. Wow. Let's uh, continue on toward the exit now. I haven't encountered the witch yet. There be witches. Witches. On our way out, we've just entered this, you know, clearly man-made bit of tunnel. And uh, there's some like cave art that they've drawn on it. <laughs> Very cool. Same on that side as well. I see daylight. Oh, is there a shot? 
gift shop. Oh, gift shop. Whoa, I've got to buy some of that uh, cave-aged cheddar. Definitely. All right, and just like that, we've made it out. Well, I really enjoyed that. That was super duper fun. Uh, which river did they say? The river a Axe, wasn't it? The river Axe. That was, it was all like formulated and in there and, you know, it flows out to wherever it goes. A guide map here, just to show you where you are so you don't get lost. So we are here, uh, obviously the cave entrance. Here. Look at this dude. A little bit of information on the River Axe. It says, deep beneath the Mendip Hills, the River Axe has worn out the great chambers and tunnels of Wookiee Hole Caves over millions of years. Again, here's a little map. So here's Wookiee Hole, obviously Wells, Glastonbury, Somerset Levels. Takes you out. Oh, Roman Fort and Temple, interesting. Uh, towards like Western Superman and a Viking ship. Very pretty as you walk out of the cave. Again, just for reference, a cave entrance over there. Presumably all part of the River Axe. Very lovely, clear water. And Velma from Scooby Doo. There's a little fairy in there. And a dragon. A wooden bridge structure here. It almost looks like Viking-esque, doesn't it? There's like a skeletal witch. Or at least somebody in a robe. With a jack-o'-lantern. All right, you've lost your head. And if all that adventurizing through the caves, you get thirsty, there's a convenient refreshments hut. Right there. Oh, look, Shaggy. Shaggy! So right underneath that um, refreshment hut is, well, obviously got Shaggy there. It's this like hole with a river flowing through. And there's a gorilla. Don't go climbing up any big skyscrapers in New York City because you'll just get, like, you know, shot off of it by an airplane. I know this is a very old place, but witches, caves, <gasps> don't quite see the link with random dinosaurs. Maybe I'm missing something. Have you guys lived here a while? Yeah? You, you come out, do, do you actually live in the cave or do you live just outside the cave? Uh, just outside? Oh yeah, you've got like a little, oh, is it, so that's your, that's your home. So you two live in there? Like some sort of like bromance thing going on? Yeah. All right, well, I see that you, you're armed and you've got your weaponry. You're going to go out and go out for a hunt? Okay, well, take care because there are some dangerous animals here. Just a word of advice. <laughs> what the heck is going on? This is just so random. Oh, hey, buddy. Are you lost? Where's your mama? Where's your mama? Are you, you look like you're in pain. Have you, like, stepped on a thorn? Oh, look at the back of your neck. It's a little bit, uh, worn there and whatnot. You need, like, a, like a bandage on, on your neck. What am I missing? Well, this is very random. <laughs> What's, yeah, but, like... It's very random. Well, like just dinosaurs here. Once upon a time, there yeah, would have been dinosaurs here. Well, yeah, I, I get that, but. I got horses. Oh, look at this! 
Adventurers Wanted Wookie Witch Witch's Laboratory. Wow, that's amazing. To be honest, I don't think I'll be able to film in here, but I'll tell you what it. Oh my goodness! I just took the fence with me. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. So no filming. So I'll tell you what this uh, what this show is like afterwards. Look at this dude. Keep everybody nice and safe. 3D glasses are in the box behind me. You don't need to put them on just yet. Otherwise, please do come in. Thank you. Okay, a little fun photo up there for the kids or anyone. I suppose I could go in it here. Hold the hold the camera. <laughs> So, I was confused enough by the dinosaurs. That show started off with like a witch and yeah. like a bat. I thought, yeah, okay, it, makes, be, it may, makes perfect sense. And then we tumbled down a rabbit hole that consisted of Scooby Doo, Dick, Dick Dastardly, Dastardly, the Blue Falcon, the Blue Falcon, and then uh, like all like set to like Greek and Roman mythology. Yeah. I'm very confused as to what that has to do with Wookie Hole and the Witch of Wookie Hole. <laughs> okay, that was it. Was a good show. The kids enjoyed it. It was all 4D, so the, the chair moved and you had wind blown in your face. Um, but I'm that doesn't remove the confusion. Nope. Still with you there. <laughs> the eye of a dinosaur. All right, uh, a fun show, but I'm very confused. This flying creature. Well, it's kind of static, but you know what I mean. So from dinosaurs, random Scooby-Doo, now we have Frankenstein's monster. What the heck is happening? <laughs> okay, the next thing here to see, Wookie Hole Cave Diving Museum. So we'll head in and have a little look. I think all this kit would be somewhat cumbersome to be dragging around a uh, cave with some very sort of tight, narrow, um, you know, tunnels to it. I suppose I could read it, that would help. Yeah, what we've got here is like through the ages, so this was like the very first cave dive, um, which was back in 1935, I want to say, I think it was 1935, wouldn't it? 1935, when we were... Wear these outfits when I go in cave diving. That's right, yeah, that would be, you know, that would be ridiculously cumbersome. Apparently it's, it states here that he had a half hundred weight of lead. Just to keep, like, you know, sunk. And from here, go to the next one, so we now go to a slightly later period of history. His equipment is a little bit more sophisticated, although I still wouldn't want to go and do that, cranky. And then we move along to the 1990s. Equipment that we would find a little bit more recognisable today, but even so, it still looks quite archaic. It's only 30 years old. Yeah, I, I would not want to be uh, a cave diver. Definitely not. What's in here? Oh, look, they've got some like exhibits of uh, stuff that they found. Look at that, a skull. Or like the cranium part of the skull. All right. Got some Roman remains here, hidden for nearly two thousand years. It states. Mm, lots of ancient bones. And then just above Shelley's head, looks like a big like diving bell. Is that what it is? Alright. Interesting, so this is all stuff that I assume they found here at Wookie Hall. Yeah, so they don't know... Um, they found it in the fourth chamber. Yeah. And they don't know whether the Romans could have got to the fourth chamber. Right. Um, they've had to excavate to get to that far. Oh, okay. Whether it's like washed there through the river axe. Oh, interesting, yeah. You assume in that case washed through, but... Yeah, who knows? I mean, the Romans were incredibly clever, so... All right, interesting. There's one hundred and fifty meters of dry cave to be traversed. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to hit his boot. Okay, next up, Wookie Hole 
This way to the paper making, play areas, restaurant, theatre, mirror maze, penny arcade, zap zone, golf, toilets, and way out. Okay. Exhibition here says the breaker, this big contraption. States there's something martial, what's it say there? Th what? Oh, to uh, Thomas, It'd be short for Thomas, wouldn't it? Thomas Marshall, London. It says there the breaker, the function of the breaker is to mangle and crush the rags into fibre uh, while in suspend while in suspension. In water, what? A while in suspension in water. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. So an exhibition here, just showing. This is about the preparation of rags for paper making. That's what it's all about. If that's what you're wondering. Ooh, hello, my name is Wookie Warrior. Yeah, on the face of it, this might seem a bit random, like a papermaking mill, but actually this is obviously historic. This is what this, this was. Yeah, this, this is a, a historic yeah. site, yeah. The it was of world famous papermaking sort of site. Yeah. So it does. Yeah, so if you want some paper made, this is the place to come, or certainly was, back in the 1800s. And there is a paper making like display. Uh, not until 12 o'clock though, so we're about uh, I don't know 45 minutes away from that. So I, I don't we'll hang around for 45 minutes. Hmm. Interesting. And oh my goodness, the kids have just spotted a soft play. This might take a while. Okay, so you got like a penny arcade in here. Entertainment of a bygone era. And this leads into the gift shop here at Wookie Hole. So as always with these types of places you've got like your random tat. Some plushes, a plush of an ostrich should you wish to procure an ostrich plush. Hmm. Now we've got random pirates. This is really bizarre. Oh, I think that tree is waking up. What's going on? So there's a mirror maze here. I won't go in just... Oh yeah, this is going to be uh, weird. Let's have fun, don't run. We'll get the kids for this bit though, because um, I might not ever get out. How disorientating. Okay, we made it back to the magical mirror maze. Let's head in. Disorientation. I think that's the real shell bell. I like Tilly's method of I'm just gonna walk like this. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a mirror. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. 
can just stick together. Yeah. Oh, look, we found the wizard. Oh. Hi, wizard. It's really Quite weird, isn't it? You just walked into a mirror. Oh, I, I suppose that. the rule is, don't walk towards yourself. Look. Made it out relatively, relatively simple. It is obviously very disorientating. Okay. Uh, but ultimately, I suppose you just, you just don't walk towards yourself, do you? So that, that's very cool. I like that. Look at this place. This is like... Really bizarre. Uh, there's no one here eating, so is it open yet? Maybe it doesn't open until 12. What's the time? Uh, is it not open until 12? I'm not sure. It's half past 11. Half past 11, okay. Maybe it's a 12 o'clock sort of thing. We'll, we'll, we'll check. There's lots of mirrors here. The little cafeteria was indeed open. It opens from about 10 o'clock, but the hot food is served at 12. We didn't really want anything hot because we'll get like a bigger meal later. So what we've opted for is. Shelly and I have just got like a sandwich each. I was feeling a bit pickish and got a Mars bar, a couple of beverages. And then the kids have got like a meal deal that they've got like some, uh, I like some half sandwiches, jellies, that type of thing, and some crisps. And that came to about 28 pounds and change. Okay, we're going to try our hand at the Pirate Island Adventure Golf. I'm not going to film too much of it because, you know, it is only mini golf. You guys get the idea. Ooh, look, Jack Sparrow. My goodness! Okay, quite a nice little setup here. We've got a boat here called the Great Adventurer. Alright, and we've now been given our clubs and we've got a ball each. And this was all part of the admission yes. fee, wasn't it? So we haven't this isn't an upcharge. Um this is all part of what we've paid to come into Wookie Hole. Okay, great technique, AJ, great technique. Club the other way, Tilly. Another could <laughs> That way. Well done, AJ. Has AJ done it? Yeah. That's it. Oh, try again. Okay. Third time. Okay, what's going on, Tilly? Stop. Put, the, put it right next to it. <laughs> You're not it. <laughs> playing golf, not hockey. Good job. <laughs> Go on, Mama Bear. <laughs> oh! Action cam. Oh. I've no idea how many holes there are. We're on hole. Five? Six? What are we on? Oh, six. Uh, a couple more in that direction. I don't know how far it goes up to, but uh, quite fun. Like I said, a little bit random for Wookie Hog. But... Fun. I'm on a... What are you doing? I'm on a, I'm on a horse. You're on a horse? Yeah, I'm panning for gold. Is he just doing some sort of like weird, crazy dance, or has he lost his box? So we're not going to do the panning for gold. This is an upcharge. It's about two pounds per, what is it, two pounds per two pan pounds or something? Per person. Per um, person. And then you dip your pan, fill it with sand, keep the shake, and then take your gold back to the kiosk and you exchange that for a gold medallion. Hmm. <laughs> the cave, as in Wookie Hole, loved it. I would go back there in a heartbeat. I really love Wookie Hole. The rest of it... Felt very much like Land's End. Very, very commercialised. In my opinion, I think it's very commercialised. It's very random. 
Uh, you know, you, you've got like all the sort of dinosaur exhibits. Scooby the Scooby-Doo. I, I really couldn't figure out the link with that. I thought the video when we were going to watch that 4D experience, um, I thought it was going to be like more to do with like the Witch of Wookie Hole. Uh, it, wasn't. It, it wasn't. It was <laughs> randomly Scooby Doo mixed with Dick Dastardly, mixed with Greek and Roman mythology. It was. I I found it really bizarre. It, uh, the um, the paper mill made sense. Made sense in the fact that that is a historic building that's been there for a long, long time. Um, you could argue it's a pity it was ever built, but obviously that was built back in the 1800s. So you know, that, there you go. To me, to me, it's as if someone with a huge amount of money. Or, like a, a, a corporation has kind of scooped this up and built it, or, or, or scooped it up and has made this sort of like the commercial side of it to just simply cash in and make money. Yeah. That's what it felt like very much to me. Like I said, very Land's End in, in how it felt, very sort of um, commercialised. Yeah, so there was stuff that obviously we couldn't do. Um, that you can do here, but you would have to pay extra and the kids are still a bit little. Mm. So you can go rock climbing through the cage, you can go... Oh yeah, you can get um, all the gear and everything, can't you? you could, there is a lot of other things. Costs. Mm. Um, obviously the kids are too little to do any of that, and I think both of us would be far too terrified. <laughs> um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly want to do that. So there's other stuff that you can do. Mm. Um, we... I feel like we've done... You know, we've done it. You know, we've yeah. spent a good amount of time here. Yeah, we've been here for about... Four hours. Three, four hours, haven't we? And like I said, I, I've, in, I've enjoyed the experience of being here. Like I said, Wookie Hole itself was fantastic. The rest of it for me personally, mm, I, I wish you could kind of pay separately to go into the cave. Yeah. Because I, I, like I said, I, I would do that all do the that time. Bit and then, yeah, um, yeah I, I personally, that's how I would do it. Yeah, pity, pity you can't just buy, the ca uh, buy access to the cave, but you know, it's, it's not yeah. set up like that. But hey ho! It but was a fun day. The kids really enjoyed themselves. Yeah, did enjoy it. We were going to close out the video here, um, so it's kind of like the end of what we're doing here at Wookie Hole. But what we are going to do, because it's still quite relatively early in the afternoon, we're going to pop to the city of Wells and just have a little mooch round, check out the cathedral, and then when we get back to Glastonbury, probably go to the Abbey. Yeah. So there's a few more bits in this video. You can either kind of give up now if you like, if you've had enough of us, or you can carry on watching, and we'll go to Wells and Glastonbury. Made it to the Union Street car park here in the middle of Wells, and right there is the cathedral. I misspoke when I said that was the cathedral. That's just a large church by the look of it, because the cathedral is in this direction. You can just see there. Lots of big churches here in Wells. Stakes here, welcome to Wells, England's smallest city. You were here, so what I saw a minute ago was St Cuthbert's Church and the cathedral. Over there, so let's head to there. Love all these like quaint buildings. I know lots of um, British cities have them, but I do love streets like this where you can kind of just, I don't know, the history just like oozes out of uh, streets like, like this. Do you, do you know what I mean? Just look at like this old door. Just, well, the door isn't that old, but the doorway looks kind of old. Just caught my eye as um, we had now, I assume, to what's the main, the main street here in Wells. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks nice. He shut his head. <laughs> look back in the other direction. Yeah, nice, I like it. Apologies in advance, this is going to turn out to be a very uh, long video, I think, with everything that we've done in Wookie Hole, Wells, and then in Glastonbury a little bit later. I was considering like breaking it up and doing like a part one and a part two to today, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll, we'll probably just leave it as is. It's an obvious statement because we are quite close to Bath. It's only about 20 miles away. But these um, buildings look very uh, like uh, Bath. Look very much like Bath. I've been to Bath a couple of times, but before I vlogged, so um, I've never been to Bath with you guys. And uh, oh, we've got one of those like gutters. Very similar to the one in Truro, where it's just like an active waterway. So um, don't go falling down the gutter. We've just walked up there, what I presume is the main street, and it leads to this pretty little square. Like in that, um, like fountain here. So the cathedral, that way. Also this pub, the Crown at Wells, caught my attention. Yeah, look at this. This is awesome. Rotary Wishing Well. 
Nice. Yeah, nice square. It appears to be pedestrianised. I mean, there is obviously vehicle access, but you can just stroll around relatively freely. AJ just scaring off a uh, pigeon. <laughs> oh, and look at this building as well. Look at that. It's very cool, isn't it? What a beautiful city. England's smallest city, so it states, uh, or so it stated back on that signpost. Let's head through these gates. The bishops? Aye. Shelley has just located a map, which we're going to have a little look at. Obviously the main area of the cathedral. Shelley. But there's like this structure here with this moat. Looks like you can walk all the way around it, so I think that's probably the plan. Let's see what Shelley's uh, thinking. So what we've stumbled into is the Bishop's Palace, which is all of this with that moat. So we're going to walk around it. I think there's an, ad an admission charge to go in. We're not going to particularly do that, but we will walk around it in a minute. But actually the cathedral is beyond like that structure there. So we're, we're not quite in the right spot for, for the cathedral, but we will we'll head back that way, definitely. But let's, let's have a little look around the, the moat. So yeah, we believe there is a charge to go into the Bishop's Palace itself. But what we're going to do, as stated, is we're just going to walk around this moat because the day has turned out to be really nice. It was a bit gloomy this morning, but it uh, turned out to be a really nice day. Little swan there just cruising past, thinking to himself, look how cool I am. Beautiful walls there. All right. And a pigeon just flew past me. Imagine just being able to, you know, if you're asked, where do you live? And you can just say, there. I love that door right there in the center of frame. Leads out from the wall to that little garden. Cool. Here's like the backside of that walled-in structure. It's like a mannequin swan there. But what caught my attention, if I go this way with the camera, is this view. Look at that for a view. Beautiful. Back at the cathedral now, after our little loop of the Bishop's Palace. We're going to walk in that gate, because the cathedral is right there. Another thing that caught my eyes is the vicar's clothes. Close. Medieval street, singing through the centuries. Look at that. Amazing. Just saw that big clock. Just before ten past two. And AJ has just fallen down that bank. He didn't cry, so we'll say that's quite funny. These sorts of places you find that you're like panning the camera around everywhere because you're just surrounded by like amazing ornate buildings. Whether you are religious or not, you cannot be, you know, you cannot help being like wowed at these sorts of uh, buildings they are. Immense. I must be uh, I must be standing like about 20 yards out from it, and it is literally taking up the whole frame. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. After a little family chat, we have decided that it would be a little bit remiss of us not to go inside the cathedral. Made it inside the cathedral into the nave. Uh, Shelley and the kids, they're like on the other side of the building doing some fun children's activities. And I thought I would just step into this bit, point the camera. said outside, whether you're religious or not, is irrelevant really. You know, how magnificent is this building? And there are some like guided tours here that you can organise. 
and they'll take you around. Someone having a sneeze there in the background. Alright, let's head in that direction. The size of that organ. <laughs> That's huge. a font of some description. Yeah, please do not climb on or touch the font. His nose has worn away over time. Perhaps he's Lord Voldemort. The one that shall not be named. Goodness, this place just goes on and on and on. Look at it. We get to this, what I presume is the far end. I don't know, I'm not very good with my cathedral architecture, but check out that window. inside the cathedral with um, the kids and Shell Bell and what caught my eye, which I missed a minute ago, was the clock. It says dating from around 1390, this is thought to be the second oldest working clock in the world and certainly the oldest with its original dial. So that is the second oldest clock in the world, or it is at least thought to be the second oldest clock in the world. Dated 1390. Amazing. We're all done in the cathedral and we went ahead, bought a fridge magnet, has to be done. And you, Tilly, you made <laughs> that badge, didn't you? With like a tree on it. That's amazing. And AJ, you made a badge as rainbow well. badge. And you pressed it yourself. You made it yourself, didn't you? And then... It's a rainbow badge. We made... A bird feeder. <laughs> but... It's a, a, a it's, bird feeder? It's a willow but, bird feeder. But the fat keeps falling out. It's, well, it'll write when it hangs up in, the, in a tree at home. It's slightly wonky. Yeah, but you we, know. we made it ourselves. Perfect. Right, we're done here in Wells. What we're going to do now to continue this incredibly long, <laughs> vlog, <laughs> what we're going to do now to continue this incredibly long video is head to the car, head back to the car and then go to Glastonbury, check out the Abbey, which is a ruined Abbey, I believe, maybe try and get a coffee somewhere and uh, we'll close out the video. <laughs> I was going to say we'll close out the video from there. So if you're still with us, well done. We successfully made the commute to Glastonbury from Wells. wasn't too far in the car, it's only a few miles. But we are here a little bit late. We could go in to the Abbey if we wanted, but it would cost us £12.10 per adult. Kids, well the kids are free, so it would cost Shelley and me like nearly £25. Uh, and we don't really think it will be worth it for just like half an hour so we're not gonna go into the abbey today and i don't know how much of a view i can get of the abbey over this door
So I think what we're going to end up doing, because we do quite like this area, I think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to come back at some point in the future. We want to go to um, Bristol and back to Bath. I've been to Bath a couple of times, but I've never actually been to Bristol. So we've got some plans, and actually this is all in a fairly close proximity. So we'll we'll come back because also we've run out of time. Really, we wanted to go up to like Glastonbury Tor. We're not going to be doing that right now. It is it is the eve is upon us, and we have got a busy day ahead of us tomorrow that the kids still don't know about. They don't know anything about tomorrow, and you guys are going to have to find out for tomorrow's, or in tomorrow's vlog, what we've got planned and what we're doing exactly tomorrow. But, it's going to be fun. But it does vol involve a little bit of driving, so another busy day tomorrow. So we're going to go and find a bite to eat here in Glastonbury, and then we're going to like go back to the hotel, hit the hay, as it were, get up nice and early tomorrow to begin another adventure. So. We're going to leave a video there. Very long video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Do all, do all the usual YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, smash the bell. Check out all of our socials at the Bryce side. So from us to you, cheers and gone.